So I'd like to introduce Marsha de Cordova, who's um, kindly agreed to speak for us today. Fantastic. I've oh, got, a, got mic. a mic. Yeah, I've got a mic. I'm mic'd up. So you can all hear me, because I can certainly hear myself. So you can absolutely all hear me. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm delighted uh, to be here for the co-creating change festival. I mean, how incredible is that? It's fantastic um, that this festival is taking place both here, but also being delivered um, online as well. This hybrid approach makes events like this more inclusive and more accessible. And I think that really has to be the way forward for the future. Um, I have to say, it's also wonderful to be back here at the Battersea Arts Centre in this incredible grand hall. I mean, it's a special place and it has such a proud and radical history. Amazing things can happen. And I want to just say to Tarek and the team, Thank you for all the work that you've done and just for continuing to be leaders in how you kind of deliver the arts and also in delivering this festival. We share a passion for young people and wanting to see you all strive and fulfill your potential using your gifts, your talents, your skills and your expertise. People working together with no hierarchies or controls co-creating change we can all believe in and how we can all collectively bring about that positive change and making a difference and i'm sure that each one of us in this room that's what we all want to strive to do young people are change makers and we only need to look at the many great achievements that have been made that has inspired us all and bring hope to us all. We know that the pandemic has shone a light on so many of the structural inequalities that exist, from in health, to education, to housing, and also in the labour market. And this was borne out in the disproportionate death rates among our black, Asian and ethnic minority communities, and also disabled people when two thirds of all those that died from the pandemic were either disabled or was living with a long-term health condition. But I know that the pandemic and those last 18 months have been incredibly challenging time for everybody, especially for young people. Their lives were disrupted from education and the closure of schools to the exam fiasco to the social interactions and engagement that led to increased loneliness and isolation, particularly as many of the usual outlets such as spaces like this, but also youth clubs, were no longer available to those. And I know from my personal experience that that really impacted so many of the young people here. With the potential of the lasting impacts on people's mental health and well-being, and we are really yet to see the true impact of that. And I believe that the mental health crisis potentially can get even worse without the right interventions being put in place. Mental health provision for young people is already under-resourced and underfunded, and we need to ensure that spaces like this are used to help improve the health and mental, the mental health and well-being of our young people. In Battersea, Battersea, if you don't know Battersea, does have a proud and radical history. And our fantastic community spirit has kicked into action over the past 18 months. Many organisations and individuals having to pivot the way that they were delivering for our young people through online routes. And nothing we all know is better than having that face-to-face -face interaction. That was always going to be the best approach, but that was a pretty good alternative in being, being able to do things online. 
Being the Member of Parliament for this area was also a challenging time for me because for me, my priority was really about ensuring that my community here were being supported from our young people to our businesses to our charities and to the arts sector because everything, as you all know, just shut down. I'm proud of the many organisations that we have here in Battersea, not least those that are delivering change and also inspiring through arts, culture, sport and also through academia. Through programmes like the Agency, who I know you're going to be hearing from this afternoon, a space for young people to take part in creative workshops, equipping them with those skills and also building and developing those professional networks to produce an idea that, will, that they are passionate about and having the potential to, you know, to be able to see their ideas come to life. And I know that they have to pitch these ideas to a panel because I had the immense privilege of being part of a panel a few years ago. And for me, it was a great opportunity to really see those young people delivering, presenting, but also those that were successful having the opportunity to really become true entrepreneurs and bringing their ideas to life. There are countless other organisations. I know the Beatbox Academy are here, and I saw some of them when I was coming in, and honestly, they too are amazing. I continue to be inspired by young people. Last summer, we witnessed the Black Lives Matter movement, where young people from across the globe were coming together to demand change. You were demanding an end to racial injustice, and to discrimination. Young people wanting to tackle the climate emergency. Just last week, well, a couple of weeks ago now, at the COP26, thousands of young people were in Glasgow, again demanding action, again demanding that we reduce our emissions and then to bring in an end to deforestation and to keep that 1.5 degrees alive. And I have to say, as co-creators of change, each of you have a role and responsibility in your own individual communities to bring about the change, and you can be your best you in doing that. In all that you do, whether big or small, never see it as just something that you know you can't be proud of and that you shouldn't want to see achieved, because really, if it's all about you as that next generation really wanting to change your communities. It starts by changing your local communities, then you go on and change the world as it, as it stands now. I know that everybody here, the reason why you're here is because you are co-creators in change. And this platform that has been created for you all to be in this space, to learn, to engage, and to network and develop can only but bring about some positive fruits for everybody to want to be part of and want to engage with. So can I just say, end by saying a massive thank you for having me, and I really look forward to hearing more and seeing more about the fantastic work that you're all doing. Thank you so much, Marsha. That was um, Marsha de Cordova, who's a member of parliament for Battersea. We um, wanted to end today with thinking about um, co-creating change and social impact. And I think if we think about social impact and moving forward, I wanted to end it with young people. So the agency is a nationwide, proje nationwide project that has been grown and is now being replicated. And I've got two agents here, I'm gonna hand you over to you in safe hands, who are gonna talk about the work that they've done and the agency, so thanks very much. Hello, hi guys, can you hear me? Hi there. So. Brilliant. So the, my name is Yomi Durinde, and I took part in the agency back in 2015 in Moston, Manchester. And now I'm one of, one of the facilitators here at Battersea with the agency in London. The agency is a program that uses a creative methodology to support young people from some of the most underserved communities in the UK to, de to develop their own ideas that will create a positive impact for their community. The agency puts the power into the hands of young people 
to be the trailblazers for the change that they want to see in their own community. We do have a quick video that we want to show you as well before we move forward. And go on. Do you want to choose? Nah, in the, go on. <laughs> while, while we're waiting for that to load up as well. Okay, um, hello, just a good volume for everybody. Is that good? Thank you, sorry. Um, my name is Osman Gordon Vernon. I'm 22 years old, and the project I'll be telling you about is Life is What You Make It, which is the board game. And if possible, if somebody could just pass this round so everybody could have a little look about it. Um, I was running a session in the members bar. Some of you were there and saw and how the game works. The game is basically a representation of a young person who lives on an estate. And I live on the Wind Stanley Estate, which isn't too far from here. And the game basically tries to make an individual understand the choices that they will have in a situation like living in an estate, which is either going into gang culture or being a civilian but also living in a place where that is the norm. And if you're not a part of that, that can cause you some kind of issues. And going on the journey with the agency, being 14 years old, knowing the opportunity I've been given to be funded and make a positive change in my community kind of led me astray in a positive way to focus on what I could do as an individual instead of kind of joining everybody else and the decisions they're making. Um, when I was around 15, 16, again, I'm still in school making this project, so I've got something else to lean on and be respected on, not just by my school or my grades. I've got a whole new um, slab to work on. I was lucky enough to be in the first group of agents in 2014, I believe, yes, and I had the opportunity to go to Brazil, which, again, is a really big opportunity because I got to become now a traveled person and once you become traveled, you start to see the world in a different light. And I saw the real extreme poverty in Brazil and the slums or favelas, which are related to um, London estates. And I could really see the um, urgency in the agency, which is the Brazilian terminology for agency in London, and how that really served their communities, which then kind of guided me to push harder and make sure I succeed also with life is what you make it. And currently I'm in a stage where I'm trying to go into secondary schools and present this as workshops and maybe primary as well, because again, people are becoming more influenced with social media. There's a lot more outlook on things and people are more exposed to it. So it's important that I expose myself earlier at a stage where I can get to those young people who could be finding themselves caught up in positions and currently now, well, I've finished my board. Hopefully you can have a look at it. If you didn't get to play it, I'm trying to, um, like I said, get into secondary schools and produce myself as a um, facilitator for this game and be able to create um, national change just as BAC has allowed me to create internal change. And thank you very much. Thank you. The Agency, putting young people at the center of change in their communities. The agency launched in 2013, working with people in some of the most disadvantaged areas of the UK. The agency puts power in young people's hands and asks them to develop their own ideas for change. Ideas born from their lived experiences and deep-rooted knowledge of their own community. The agency unleashes the amazing originality and innovation of young people who have grown up in challenging situations, supporting them to brave, creative ideas to tackle increasing inequality. Since we began, 266 young people have become change makers in their communities. 45 new socially engaged projects have launched across four cities. Over 38,000 people have benefited. Over £118,000 of income has been generated. Young people have led the way in projects such as Universal Language, which offers English and football sessions for young people who have recently arrived in the UK. Redefine is a theatre company and advocacy platform that discusses the issues facing young people leaving the care system. Your Way is a specialist youth club which offers sports and arts activities designed to support young people to think creatively about their mental health. Film Firm is an accessible film competition designed to diversify young people entering the film industry. Walk and Talk offers hiking trips to create spaces where young men can discuss mental health issues. 
Crumbs provide creative cooking classes for food bank users. Empower Her is a boxing project and campaign empowering young women to participate in sports and competitions. Working Out the Kinks is a project which aims to empower young BAME girls in primary schools through interactive hair workshops surrounding self-worth and self-image. Greenplug is a hydroponic farming scheme helping to grow vegetables in areas with poor soil to reduce air miles from imports. Join us at agency underscore change. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, (laughs) brilliant. So, before I move on now, I want to kind of take a few steps back and tell you guys a story. The agency was originally created in Rio by a man called uh, Marcus Faustini. Now, Marcus Faustini grew up in the favelas of Rio and by nature was actually a theater maker. During his studies, he was lucky enough to get a scholarship to study in a more prestigious school that he definitely wouldn't have been able to afford by himself coming from the favelas. And that meant that he grew up, he studied in an area surrounded by people very different to what he's used to, what he's normally around. It was during his time at school where he started questioning what's the difference between him and the people that he knew from back home in the favelas and the people he studied with in this university or school. And that's when he kind of settled on the concept of agency. By definition, agency is the ability to take action or to choose what action to take. And he believed that young people in the favelas didn't feel like they had the power to change their situation. And they felt like they didn't have the right to access the opportunities and facilities that were also available to them, but just within the city of Rio at their doorstep. Now, Mr. Falsini then built on this concept of agency and did research over the next 20 years in the favelas, in the community, before gathering all this research and lived experiences of young people, pulling all of that together to create the methodology that we now call the agency methodology. The methodology strives to empower young people to turn their ideas into intervention projects for their community. It isn't a social project and it isn't a business training course. It's rather a stimulus for intervention. Giving young people the tools, the freedom and the agency to then take their ideas and turn them into reality and be the solution to their own challenges and the challenges that their community faces. Started in 2011, the agency started running in Rio and since then, over a thousand young people have engaged with the project and with the methodology. And more than a, and hundreds of projects have also been developed through the methodology, some of which have actually grown themselves to become NGOs in their own rights. Now, that shows just how groundbreaking and revolutionary that has been in Rio and to its communities. In 2013, though, the Battersea Arts Centre and Contact Theatre Manchester then worked with Marcus Faustini and young people to change the methodology from a Brazilian context into a British context. The theatres worked with young people from specifically the Winstanley Estate in Battersea, London, and the Mustard and Harpe area of Manchester, because they identified that these young people were feeling the same feelings of being disenfranchised to the opportunities that their cities had to offer them also at their doorstep. Since then, the agency in the UK has worked with hundreds of young people and supported more than 80 youth-led projects within England, Northern Ireland, no, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Now, that brings me nicely onto my project. Like I said, I took part in the agency back in 2015. And when I reflect back on my time with the agency, something that I can personally vouch for is the way the agency gives you the tools needed in not just project managing, but also how to tackle problems in general later on in life. One of the first few sessions you do, you create a compass. Now, the compass is slightly different to a conventional compass. 
while it still gives you direction and like foresight in terms of where you're going, instead of having north, south, east, and west, it has desire, form, territory, and idea. And of course, with it being Brazilian and then translated to English, those words mean slightly different things that you'd naturally assume. And that just is how the agency is. It's the mystery and the, the beauty of the project. Now, looking, now when I, when I went through the project, I realized that my personal desire was community and networking. I always used to say back in my sessions that you never know what opportunities are just outside your circle of friends or your network. And in Manchester in particular, there's a geographical problem with the underprovision of resources and facilities. If you look at a map of Manchester, you realize that all the higher educational schools, universities are all in South Manchester. Or the creative facilities are in South Manchester, Central Manchester. Or the sporting, sporting teams, all the sporting facilities are also in South Manchester. Weirdly, even there's better links in terms of transport in South Manchester compared to North Manchester. And the agency is based in North Manchester, and that's where I was from, and that's where my project started. It was this clear division in provisions in Manchester and my personal desire for networking and community cohesion for young people in Manchester that brought me to developing Three Points. Now, Three Points is a, basketball is a project that runs basketball tournaments in Manchester designed to use randomized teams to encourage networking and community cohesion. Now, it does this because well, I chose to pick basketball in particular because I personally like basketball and because basketball is a very team-orientated sport. There's only five players on the pitch or on the court. And that means it relies majorly on chemistry and on communication to be successful. So by randomizing my teams on the day, it means that all the young people that come from all over Manchester and the neighboring cities are all encouraged to firstly put aside any differences they have or they had before they came and also start building the kind of chemistry and network and rapport that they need to be an effective team. Hence, give them teamwork skills, communication skills, stuff that they might not have developed elsewhere. And I think that is what makes the agency and the work it does very, very unique. Because the projects that come out of the methodology are literally layered with the personal experiences and perspectives of the agents. It means that it utilizes the lived experiences of the young people to, and their playful creativity within themselves to tackle problems in communities in ways that only people from that community could think of. The agency pays the young people as well a weekly amount to develop the ideas. And then if it's successful, you get £2,000 to d develop your idea from an idea into a project. It also gives you a producer, which will help you step by step on a one-to-one -one basis for many months after the, the first cycle, the first process. So you really are the trailblazer for your idea. And you learn by doing and doing and failing and doing and failing just continuously like that until eventually you get somewhere that you are happy or that you're happy to, to put, put, put out to the world. Now that also, also on that topic of what makes the agency quite unique is that no one else is better suited to think of new ways of solving problems than young people. And what the agency does is that it tells them that it had, they have all the tools around them to make change, and all they need to have within themselves is the agency to then turn their ideas and their concepts into projects for their communities. And also, Osmond has another video to show as well about his project, which is wow. about to come on screen. Yeah? My name is Osmond. I'm running a live board game which allows young people and the players within the community to experience 
what it's like living on an estate. I thought the game was really educational because I think in the times that we're in with a lot of like crime and stuff going on, I think a lot of young kids need to be educated about the decisions that they're making in life and it was a good interactive way of getting them to understand different choices. But I think it was a really, really good game. It was set up really nicely. I think because you could see the areas. If you're brought up around this area, you could literally see the areas on the map that you know and even like the youth centres as well that are on there. It's really good to sort of get involved with stuff that you're familiar with. It makes you think about your decisions and how they really impact your life. Although it's just a game, it does, it does translate to real life. And especially for like for the kids out here as well. Like I think it's really good that we've got kids here playing the game because it's it's a fun way to open the mind of a child, you know. It's like instead of lecturing a child, and telling them, yo, don't do this or don't do that, it's you're, you're saying no, let's play this fun game, it's gonna make you think at the same time. That is the agency. Now, do you guys have any questions? At all? Got the 3 a.m. energy again. <laughs> where, where, is it here? Uh, thank you both for that, Osman. That is such a sick idea. Like, a really, really sick idea. Thank you. And just literally blown away of how you've put all that together. So really well done. Appreciate it. Um, is the plan then, as it said at the end there, to take that to schools and... Yeah. My current plan and end goal plan will be for myself to be situated in secondary schools in South London, first of all, just to see how that works. Again, knowing how, again, being in from school, like I just basically finished school. Um, I know what the environment's like and what that needs. And this is a situation where if I was in school, it would have influenced others I know and boosted my morale to keep up that positive mindset and not being just drawn into status quo of environment. So yeah, it would be ideal for me to go into secondary schools, year seven to nine, or even some primary schools, year sixes, and deliver these workshops similarly to how I did today in the members bar, or just how you saw in that little clip there. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. And just thinking about the design and how it came alive, who helped you with the making of that? So was it a particular company? Um, no, it was individuals that I've worked with throughout. So from day one, I was around 15, 16. Again, my producer at the time machine, she would come and pick me up from school a bit early <laughs> to just do some things outside, which really made me feel special at the time, which every, every young person needs. It was an individual who I met from Chelsea College, which is just on Battersea Bridge. Mm -hmm. His name was um, Matt, Matt something. I really apologize yeah, for not remembering his second name, but he is an individual I met at 14, and I kind of pitched my idea to a classroom full of um, graduates at the time. I think they were, they were doing art, and I just explained what my game was. It was a street game related to this kind of content, but he kind of immediately knew what it was and was very adamant that he was the one who did it, and I've worked with him ever since. All my funding I've got mm -hmm. has always gone to that one individual, and our relationship is around seven years strong. Brilliant. So, yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh. So, we've got someone here? Oh, yeah, and then one at the back. Oh. Um, yeah, just echoing that. That is, like, unbelievable, and I'm so impressed. And I'm just wondering, like... Uh, how easy it is to translate that game to other places in England so that other people can use it. I just feel like, obviously, there's a lot of um, references to, like, local places here. How easy would it be to, like, recreate that game for an estate in Bristol? Um, I think that's always been part of the dream, in a way, but it's never been touched on publicly until a question's raised like that. Um, again, having in other estates, we would just strip the road names of mine and put their name and then maybe, if it wasn't too much, maybe try to get a few graphics made of their own blocks and their own youth club so now it's adapted to their environment. It's the same prototype, the only thing that changes is just the street names. 
So yeah, it would be adaptable to any estate or anywhere, wherever you are, we'll come to you. Yeah. I feel like it's going to change people's lives. Well done. It's amazing. Thank you. Last question. Yeah, meet me in the middle. Hi. Um, I, I think it's great. Um, I, I feel that it has the strength to be put onto a school curriculum. Um, so then it actually becomes part of a you know, tuition within the classroom where they actually take your framework, your model, and then they then, uh, within the school sector for their local areas, put the street names and stuff like that. Um, I feel, you know, if, I, if I was in your boots, I would be trying to contact local government and central government to speak to the education department and actually say, look, this is actually changing lives. Um, and I, I t so much respect for you, it's amazing. Thank you very much, I take that highly. Yeah, and then we are going to go to the beatboxers. Unless there's any more questions. So I arrived a bit late at the end of that, but looked what I saw was fantastic. I, I run a thing called Steam Co, which is about connecting kids with art and communities with schools. And next Wednesday, I'm on the Seacroft Estate in Leeds, which is one of the most well-known estates in, in the UK. And I just wonder if you'd be interested in coming along to that, because the head teacher there is so up for stuff like this. And next door, and that's a primary, and next door is a secondary school. That is, and they're the feeder for that. So in one day, you could make a connection in Yorkshire and think a little bit bigger than just London, because from what I saw of it, and I was watching it on the train getting here as well, it's just brilliant. Uh, definitely, if I heard correctly, was that this Wednesday, did you say? Next Wednesday, Next Wednesday, Wednesday the first, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm fine, I'll put we'll you in. If I take my email or you take my email, I'll definitely love the opportunity again, these ah. kind of spaces, yes. those opportunities <laughs> is what we like to hear. So yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. And, and also, just to like follow up on what's happening right here, um, with the agency, this is kind of what it does. It, it gives you the power to make your change and start what you want to do, and then puts you into rooms for people to help you, to build those networks, to start going to other things. And it's, again, this, this is just the agency, naturally. So thank you guys for your opportunities as well. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say that um, the agency is a replicable model. We at Batsy Art Centre and Contacts replicated it um, from Brazil um, and we've spent the last five years um, creating a toolkit um, and creating a shareable, shareable manual um, and testing out that sort of training and replication in Wales and Northern Ireland, as Yomi said. Um, and we've now got a bit of funding for the next five years from the National Lottery Community Fund um, to get those toolkits and that training um, plan out there. So we're looking for five new partners to work with us over the next five years to share this really, really good methodology and get it out to more young people because it really, really does make a change. Um, that funding is also going to enable us to bring young people um, who are doing the agency together in a national um, meeting every year so they can share a network and grow those ideas and lobby and make change on a national level. Um, so yeah, if, if you run an arts organisation or a community organisation or a cultural organisation or you work for a council and um, are interested in any way in trying to get this methodology into your town or city, then please do come and talk to Osman, Jomi, myself or Sarah or anyone who works from Battersea Arts Centre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. We are at the end and we've got a total treat for you. Um, and I really wanted um, Beatbox Academy to be here today and they are here. So um, I hate saying goodbye. So I'm going to say thank you and goodbye now. So this is the final session. I think we're going to wrap up a bit early. So if people want to hang around and chat, they're really welcome to. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for making it through two days such a lot after being inside for almost two years but it's been wonderful um, and there's still two days of sessions online and a lot of them are going to be amazing so please um, if you're too tired to check them out another time but they're going to be great so thank you so much and I'm going to hand over to Comrade and the Beatbox Academy Hello Co-Creating Network how's it going good? You still awake?
Yo, when I say B A, you say C B A C B A C. When I say beatbox, you say Academy beatbox. Beatbox. Give yourselves a round of applause. Woo! Yo, so these are some of the members of the Beatbox Academy. There's loads of other members. Um, my name is Comrade. We started the Beatbox Academy 13 years ago. If you didn't know, if you didn't know, now you know. Um, Liz Morton, who just spoke on the mic a minute ago, said to me, yo, Comrade, you're into hip hop. You want to make hip hop fit? You're into that? Do you want to be part of a new thing we're going to create called the Beatbox Academy? I'm like, Beatbox Academy, what's that? And it's like, well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. So it's a place for young people to come, make sounds, make beats, cuss each other out, and go to the chip shop. <laughs> now, it's a place to, to make memories, and the conduit to get young people to come and be part in, in an art center and collaborate is the beatboxing. So beatboxing, along with beatboxing, comes the rapping, comes the spoken word, comes the cussing your mom, no, comes, comes hanging out. Maybe some people will go on and make some, some art, some performance, so we've made shows that have got five star reviews, we made a film for the BBC, but also, maybe you'll go on people to become teachers and TAs, or maybe you'll be a bus driver with the spirit of a rapper, or a plumber with the energy of a spoken word artist. And that's all okay. Um, so we co-create our work. Give me a cheer if you're a co-creator in the room. I'm gonna ask a serious question. When you are out there doing your co-creating, do you ever ask yourself, am I actually co-creating right now? Is this co-creating. That's good. That's good. That's a good sign. Because it's a process, it's a craft, it's a skill. Collaborating and working together is a skill. So it's something that we're not just good at and it's not one way. It has different contexts. How old are they? Who are they? Where are they from? And constantly we all question ourselves, you know, is how much is this a bad way, in my, in my opinion, to co-create is to say everyone says everything and has a say at all times because it leads to madness. We all can't have equal say at all times. That's why we have experts to come in the room and kind of help to shape and, and kind of divide with each other, right? To, to, to guide the room. And I'm sure we've been in situations where we've said, it's up to all of us to pick this and it's madness. I remember I was part of one show and we said, you guys are gonna pick the title of this show. The show was about the news, it's about politics. It was about the news. And the title they come up with was Mind the Gap. And it's like, why mind the gap? And it's like, because it's, when you sit on trains, that's when you read the news. And it was like, this title's fucking shit. But it's what they wanted. So we had to go with this title because we said, whatever you vote for, we're going to get. So sometimes you get what you're given and that's what you go with. But I'm not going to, I don't want to do all the talking because we've got some of the people here who've done co-creating. We've made Frankenstein with some of the members. We're also working on a new piece called The Last Man. Um, and I'm going to ask these guys just to say a few bits about kind of what it is for them as artists, young artists. Some people have come, been coming to the academy for seven, eight years, some for a few years, some for shorter. Um, so guys, speak up. They've got, you've got mics in your hands. Just burst into it. Well, yeah, I'd say like one of the best things about co-creating actually is like it's being in a room with people who are like all really fucking good at what they do. And when that happens, there's like one slight problem and it's just ideas are coming out and out and out and out and out. And some of them are really good, but it's about like, for me, it's about finding which ones stick. And that could be like lyrics, that could be the way in which like the entire musicality is going. And that's where like Abes comes in and he's just like, we've got to do something here. And it's just whoosh. Those are the moments when you're like, okay, this is like getting more complicit and people need to like step up into, into roles. Like there was one rehearsal we did and Kate, who isn't here today, she was just like, Comrade was running late. And she just completely took over the rehearsal. She was like, everyone in here, like we're, we're going from the start of the session. Yeah, like, we, we can miss out on about me being late, do you know what I'm saying, what? <laughs> but no, it's, it, people, people have to like be willing to step up at times and that was a sick thing. Like, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think following on from that, it's all about the, like, the potential of like, the, each performer. Because um, if you're being told specifically, you have to do this, you have to do that, you don't unlock your potential as a performer because you're not putting yourself in it as much. If you, go, if you have to be in a space because you've been told to be there, there's no like, reason behind it. But also, it's, it doesn't unlock the full potential of the piece because if, say, uh, Tyler's doing this one thing and I go, oh, I can do this, 
but then, oh no, I've not been told to, so I can't, it's not gonna make the piece better. Like, do bad ideas come out of that? Yeah, but it's about like the whole trial and error. And if it's a good idea, go with it. If it doesn't work, then we'll find another way to like sort it out. Another thing as well is kind of learning how to work in that group dynamic. And even sometimes in a song, you might just be doing hi-hats. And that's fine, because you're adding to the whole song in, in general. Um, and yeah, definitely just, um, yeah, just learning to work in a group and know when to kind of come back a bit. And even if you're not doing much, it's still something. Uh, I actually do a lot of things with a lot of different groups, one of them being a group called Folk Dance Remix, and that's an example of when you're leapt into a piece and you're told, oh, what you have to do, oh, you're just going to do... And one of, the, one of the bosses of Folk Dance Remix saw me at a gig recently and she saw all... She was like, wow, your skills are really wasted in our show for the last three years, and that's the opposite side of co-creating, exactly, right? So when you're co-creating at the start, you already know what all of your skills are, what your strengths are. If you've been working with some of the people for a long time, you know what their strengths are, and they certainly know what their strengths and weaknesses are. It's so much easier to be cohesive as a group when you have that opportunity from the start, and it's so much more motivating, like, from an artist's perspective, when you're given that trust, and, you know, they say, we trust your skills, and we trust that you can make a cool show. Here's one stimulus. Go do it. I mean, I do feel like it makes better connections and work habits as a team because we're not, we're not just following one leader. Obviously, he's our director. He's great. But at the same time, when we get given that stimulus, we then just build the connections from the start. With other projects that I've done and other things, I felt like, oh, no, we're following this, so we don't get to connect as much. But with the, the projects that I've done with The Last Man and stuff, this has been great, just all the connections that we've made. This is the first time a lot of these guys have done any public speaking, so can you get a round of applause? So, so, so this is a, a, a few people from the group, some people aren't here, so we're going to just show you a couple of musical bits that we can. Uh, this first bit is from a new scratch we're developing called The Last Man, uh, which is based, we're going to respond to a book that Mary Shelley wrote after Frankenstein uh, called The Last Man, about a worldwide plague that ravishes the world, kills everyone but the last man. Uh, give it a go. Starting the revolution, we could do so much, no constitution. Let's throw out who these lies, who these massive news headlines, cause they just want control. All free will to take our souls Hear the country, let them roar No more time to be ignored If I could Go back in time and change the mind So if I could Go back in time and start the fire If I could Go back in time and change the mind So if I could Go back in time and start the fire I've had enough of the biased news And the media spreading these hateful views Wake up in the morning and I gotta choose Turn on the TV, see these fools I say change, you say now You say I don't know what you're talking about All I can do is tell you the truth And pray that you listen and if I back to If I could Go back in time and change the mind So if I could Go back in time and start the fire If I could Go back in time and change the mind So oh, if I would Go back in time and start the fire Everyone out in the street In the centre is where we'll meet Grab your pitchforks, grab your hatchets Bring our hammer to fucking smash it Bring your grandma, bring your granddad Bring your daughters, bring your sons For too long we've been down in the gutters Now the gutters are overrun Spreading into the streets, we never want our words to be discreet. We've been caged too long to care, we're breaking out with all the snares. This fire cannot be caged, we're flying out on the stage. And when they see us in the streets, it will be like murder, you see. I want us to realise this is our world, no repeating Always feeding natural sources, making cash and starting shortages Supply demand, killing our homes but they say calm down Killing our homes but they say calm down If I could, 
Go back in time and start the fire if I could. Go back in time and change the fire if I could. Go back in time and start the fire if I could. Go back in time and change the fire if I could. Go back in time and start the fire. Yo, round of applause, round of applause. Can we, can we get this mic in particular turned up? Is there someone on the sounds? Can Hello? Get, He's very quiet. Right there. Can we get this mic turned up? We gotta go check it so it knows. Hello? Hello? Yeah. American, Bolivian, Namibian, Parisian, South African, Australian, Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Republic, Dominican, Amphibian, Lesbian, Presbyterian, Alien, Indian, Algerian, South America, Minots are in the bin again, Mexican, Christian, Guardian, Tasmanian, Albanian, Romanian, Armenian, Shakespearean, Iranian, Brazilian. This is a lyrical all sorts. You can be black or white, you can be erudite, you can be hermaphrodite, you can live where you like, you can be dark or light, you can be dull or bright, you can be out of sight, you can be what you like, you can wear what you like, you can be paralyzed from a fall or a fight, you can be from the by, even from the Isle of Wight, even gay, straight or bi, you can be mono blind. We are all the same guy. If you used to be a man, if you have a spray on tan, and no man or even pan, you can be from Japan. <sighs> this is a lyrical all sorts: Syrian, Argentinian, Victorian, Ebonian, Etruscan, Mancunian, Liverpudlian, Authoritarian. I Sagittarian, chameleon, barbarian, equestrian, pedestrian, centurion, librarian, Aryan, even just a skeleton, Italian, Transylvanian, vegetarian, Slovakian, Slovenian, Mahuvian, Peruvian, Nigerian. Comedian. This is a lyrical all sorts liberal, lyrical all sorts Aboriginal, lyrical all sorts criminal, lyrical all sorts cannibal, lyrical all sorts community, lyrical all sorts equality, lyrical all sorts honesty. lyrical all sorts humanity. This is a lyrical all sorts. Yo, round of applause, round of applause. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you a little bit of a beatbox battle, get you guys involved. If you don't know what a beatbox battle is, that's where one brave beatbox warrior enters the beatbox arena and goes back to back with another brave beatboxer. And the winner of this battle is decided by you guys, the audience. Are you guys up for judging a beatbox battle? I said, are you up for judging a beatbox battle? Amazing. So first up, we're going to have Luke versus Wizard. Okay, let's count down together. Three, two, one. Let's go. Three, two, one. Hit it. Okay, listen up, because you guys are going to judge this battle. Let's count down. Three, two, one. Hit it. 
Okay, here's where you guys come in, my judges. Give me a cheer and a scream if you think the Luke won the battle. <laughs> give me a cheer and a scream if you think the Wizard won the battle. Yeah. Okay, watch my hands. Yeah. That was a draw, round of applause. Shake hands, guys, shake hands. Okay, we're gonna do one more. Are you guys up for judging one final battle? Yes, you are. Okay, we're going to have ABH versus Apollo. Come on, guys. Round of applause, round of applause. Yeah, okay, yeah. Apollo, you're going to go first. Okay, let's count down. Three, two, hit it. I want to know Smoke 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 oh, oh, What's your name again? Smoke 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 Five, four, three, two, pull it. Round of applause, round of applause. It sounded like, it sounded like dinosaurs fighting at one point. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Let's count down ABH. Three, two, one. Hit it. You wanna know my name, 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 name? Switch. Feeling in a garage fire. DJ TZ, TZ, TZ. DJ TZ, TZ, TZ. DJ TZ 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 DJ And it feels like Sweet like chocolate da, 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 da. You can sing with me da, 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 da. Now I have officially won this battle. Yeah, sweet like chocolate. Smells ah. <laughs> like switch. Should be disqualified because I didn't count you down, but it's all right. It's all right. We'll give it to you. Okay, just give me a cheer and just give me a thing that Apollo won the battle. Yeah. Yeah. ABH. Yeah. Apollo. Yeah. ABH. Yeah. Would you believe it? Another draw. Another draw. Uh, okay, we're going to do one more thing for you guys. 
We're going to finish with a circle jam. It's a part of our practice in Academy where we jam and improvise, come up with beats. I conduct the guys and they come up on the spot. So this piece of music will be created live now for you in the room. Thank you very much for having us. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Beatbox champion, ABH, James, Luke, yo, when I say BA, you say C, B A, B A, when I say beatbox, you say academy, beatbox, beatbox, yo, big up yourselves, co-creating network, yo, yo, we'll see you next time, cheers. And one more time, make some noise for Conrad. Mm -hmm.